Hello everyone, this is Mike Urigan, General Manager and Director of Golf of Golf Brevard, and we uh, have another one of our videos that we'd like to uh, let you know some information that's going on, and we have a great announcement. Mr. Steve Proctor, our Chairman of the Golf Brevard nonprofit, is here, and uh, Steve, take it away. Thank you, Mike. A very exciting announcement today. Golf Brevard has now signed a contract with the Toro Company to replace the failing irrigation system here at the Habitat where Mike and I are recording this video. We are going to be able to get started on this project in January and we expect to have a new state-of-the-art irrigation system and pumping station installed by the end of March. Obviously this is a red letter day for Golf Brevard because we will be able to execute this expensive operation in excess of a million and a half dollars without having to borrow money because we've been very cautious and prudent and planning for this day since the moment we got the opportunity to run these two golf courses. We have had very significant issues with the irrigation system at the habitat from the moment we took over and we were concerned that we might not ever get to this day without it failing on us. The situation is that desperate. So we're very excited to be at this point where we have workmen lined up and materials lined up and have the ability to get going in January on this project. In a little while, Mike will explain how the project will unfold and what it will mean for all of you as golfers. But I did want to address something that I know because I play a lot of my golf at Spessard Holland is on the minds of those who play golf there. And that is, when will it be our turn to get a major project done over here? And the answer to that is next. You know, we now have a very healthy position financially in the bank. We have the money to be able to proceed with this project paying in cash and yet still be very comfortable in terms of having enough cash on hand to manage the golf course and deal with any contingency that might arise as a consequence of taking on this project. We also have a half million dollar line of credit lined up in the event that we need that, although we have no expectation of needing it. But it's prudent to have on hand in case something goes wrong. Our next goal is to replace the greens at Spessard, which all of you who know that play there know that they are badly infested with paspalum grass, and not only that, they're old and just failing health-wise by virtue of their age. Actually, that same thing is true at the Habitat, and one day their greens will also need to be replaced. They don't have the contamination problem at Habitat that we have at Spessard, but still the greens are in excess of 30 years old, and at that point in their life, greens need to be taken up and replaced. So, But the first place we need to do that will be Spessard, and the project will be taken on as soon as we are able to restore our financial position to the same secure situation that we have now as we undertake this irrigation project at the Habitat. Based on our projections and on how things have been going, we have every hope of being able to have the greens at Spessard replaced by the summer of 2024 or worst case, 2025. So I wanted to share that exciting news with you and I do think that even though the Habitat and Spessard are in glorious condition right now, once we have the state-of-the-art irrigation system, it will allow Jamie Baker, our truly gifted greenkeeper, to control the amount of moisture on the course at a level that's absolutely amazing because of the increases and advances in technology since the time our first irrigation system was put in 30-some years ago. So we're looking forward to a very, very bright future at the Habitat and at Spessard Holland, and we have every expectation to be able to continue to thrive financially so that we can make further improvements to both of these golf courses, starting next with the greens at Spessard Holland. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Mike to let him explain to you how this project will unfold and what it will mean to you as golfers. Thank you, Mr. Proctor. Um, it's really going to be quite interesting and we hope you all will be able to uh, come out and see it when you're playing. Um, so very simply, we're going to do one hole at a time. So we're setting up the situation with um, the different contractors that we have. Toro will supply all the parts and um, Watertronics will have the pump station. The pump station is actually being built as we speak and it will be delivered sometime in April. So. Um, Vern and his company out of Vero will come up, we will do one hole at a time, we will pick a strategic area on the golf course to start. Uh, obviously lo logistics are a big problem here at Habitat because of 14 and 15 out in, in the back corner, but also we have access to that part of the property. 
So as we get started, one hole at a time, we'll bring in the new piping. We'll tie into the new piping into the old piping so we can actually irrigate those holes as we go and the rest of the golf course will be available to water now uh, let's let's hope that we do have our normal rain uh you know rain showers in the afternoon that we haven't had over the last two or three years so what that'll mean is that we'll have a 17 hole golf course and we're going to need your support on that side of it one hole will be shut down at a time you'll be able to play 17 holes we're going to have a, a fun hole set up on the driving range where you can come over and it'll be at some courses, they call it their 19th hole. Uh, Steve and I just played up at uh, Scott's place and they have an, uh, up in North Carolina and they have a 19th hole. So we will be able to set up a hole, you'll be able to hit maybe a wedge or a, we a nine iron or something onto that. We'll have some fun with it. Uh, you get it closest to the pen, we'll give maybe a draft beer away. We're, we're still kind of putting that together, how that'll all look, but the 17 holes, You'll play, you'll come around to the clubhouse. Um, it, it, it's going to be fun. Now, the hard part is um, when we're out doing the 14th hole, you're going to have to skip around. So we will have staff available and we'll, you know, we'll get you around the golf course. But we're definitely going to need your support during that time frame. Uh, obviously, you know, some people are going to say, well, you know, you only have a 17 holes. What are you going to do? So we're coming up with all these fun things. And again, from the financial part of it, now we don't have to close the whole golf course for three or four months and lose the revenue and also um with with that said it gives you an opportunity to come out and see what and how this is all going to unfold it's pretty amazing uh, with the new piping the new uh heads that will be in the ground we'll be able to jamie will be able to program the uh let's say the 10th hole where most of you know we we have a wet spot in front of the green on set on 10 18 7 we can actually turn down uh the pressure and the amount of gallons that come out of each individual head. So let's say we want to put five minutes on the back of the green on number seven where it dries out a little bit or number 10 and we want to have uh, two minutes on the front of the green where we know that that extra uh, water gets around the way the system is set up now. So it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing and uh, we're just excited about having the opportunity. Now here's the reason that we're doing it in January. All the contractors are already booked out years in advance and and Vern who is in Vero who is going to do actually the labor installing of all the equipment had a window of starting in January or we would have had to wait till all the way till October now with Jamie's blood pressure and the staff and in between all the different leaks that we've had we've had in excess of over 200 leaks and pipes that have gone down um, on the golf course since we took over and that number might even be higher I, I might be underestimating that a little bit but we've had 30 leaks in the last two and a half to three weeks so the system is in that critical stage like Steve said we are in a we're in a nail biting situation right now because four of our satellite boxes don't have power to the golf course one day they do one day they don't so we know we have issues underground we had the hurricane come through the rain and the two one with uh, Ian and Nicole so we know that there's problems underground our biggest fear is that we're going to get into January February and March and not be able to irrigate well with this system going in the dry times obviously uh, the, the grass is not growing as fast if we do get a frost or a freeze it'll slow down the process of the grass growing even more so it's we're in a very critical stage here at Habitat so that's why we were able to, to get Vern and his company in in January we'll get things done and fingers crossed we might even be done by the end of February but our time frame is uh, the end of March as Steve had said earlier so we're we're excited we know it's going to be a little inconvenience for the golfers but we definitely want you all to come out and support us if you can and um, right now things are going great the course is in fantastic shape Dan and Jamie have done a fantastic job at both properties and again, anything you do have to, uh, you know, want to come up and see the process and, the, and what's going on. I do have some schematics. We're meeting on December 7th with the whole, all, all parties. We're going to get together and the game plan will be set as of December 8th. And we'll go to work January 2nd. And um, really, we're excited. Uh, I, and I want to thank again the board and their support of doing this. And uh, Bill Crude will put all the numbers together and feels like we can do this. Um, without borrowing any money, which is uh, incredible.
So again, thank you, Steve. Yep. Anything else you want to add to that at the end I, there? I do want to add that, you know, one of the reasons that we're able to do it in January is that it's a high-risk operation to do major construction at the time of year when you make the most of your money, as all golf courses in Florida do in January, February, March, and April. Those are our strongest months of the year financially. So it's critically important that all of you who have been playing continue to come out and play and support the golf course so that we don't have really substantive revenue loss associated with the irrigation system installation. It's important that you do that. We're hoping that you will. You know, this is now our golf course in a way that it's never been before because we uh, it's owned by a nonprofit that's managed exclusively by golfers who play at Spessard Holland and Habitat. All the board members play here on the regular basis. And so it's really important that you continue to support the golf course during this time so that we don't have very difficult revenue situation on top of the large expense involved in installing the irrigation system. Obviously there will be some dec decline in revenue more than likely and we've planned for a little bit but we really would uh, we really would be hurting more if we had a significant decline in revenue so it's important that you all continue to come out and support the golf course and you will be able to have a registered handicap with the 17 holes even if you don't play a fun 18th hole the USGA rules permit you to put your handicap score as the final score and to enter your score just as you always right. do uh, when you have played uh, fewer than 18 holes. Under the USGA rules, if you have played a 13 holes, you've played a complete round as far as handicapping is concerned, and any holes that you're unable to play, you would get your handicap score on that hole. So if you get a stroke on that hole, then you get a bogey. If you don't get a stroke on that hole, you get a par. That's the way it would work. So you still be able to put your handicap scores in. I know a lot of players are very interested in keeping an accurate handicap, and you'll continue to be able to do that while the irrigation system is being installed. So I wanted to point out those two other things, but it's really, really important that you continue, continue to come out and play and that our revenue remains strong uh, while we take this opportunity to get the irrigation problem under control and to give ourselves a chance to continue earning enough money after the installation of the irrigation system to be prepared to take this same approach to replacing the greens at Spessard which will be a much more difficult proposition because when you do that you have to have holes many many holes closed at once and revenue is going to be a much more difficult thing to sustain under those circumstances and we know that and we're planning to be able to manage that but we need your support during this this time while we're fixing up here at habitat so that we'll be well positioned to continue with the improvements at Spesser at our earliest opportunity, which I know as a regular player at Spesser is something that's extremely high on my priority list as the chair of this board. So thank you for everything you've done to get us in this position. Uh, we look forward to a bright future and we know we can count on your support going forward. Thank you everyone uh, and we'll see you soon and uh, we'll be doing another golf video here shortly. So thanks again, we'll see you soon. Take care everybody.